Trowell gets two years, read all about it. Hey, paper. Martha Trowell gets two years, read all about it here. Hey, what? Hey, paper! I'm sorry, Martha. It's time to go now. It's all right, honey. Finish your coffee. Oh, this one is on the state. The deputy will take it. Thank you. Isn't that Martha Crowell? She's young, isn't she? Yeah, she won't be when she gets out. I brought a late paper, Judy. It's not often we get a famous person in here. Think she'd autograph her picture? Leave her alone, Molly. She didn't want that kind of fame. Then why did she shoot him? She had good reason to. She was lucky he lived. It's too bad he did. Boy, you sound like you hate men. <laughs> Some of them. Uh, including me? <laughs> no, Tommy. You're something special. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of ironic, ain't it? She gets two years at the honor camp, and that's what she was fighting to protect. <laughs> What you studying, Tommy? Advanced theories in nuclear fission. Oh. You crazy on an empty stomach? It's a night school assignment. Well, you got a good job. What are you going to night school for? Well, I'm burdened with ambition. Oh, to each his own. What do you have, Tommy? I uh, gave Molly my order. Oh, I forgot it. What was it? The number four, the rice and shrimp dinner. Okay. <laughs> no white in the seven dwarfs. Hey, Molly wants us to double date with her tonight at the lake. Can you make it? Oh, sorry, Tommy. I promised Francis I'd help her with the washing. It's piled up. What does she do all day? Polish her fingernails? She's been sick. Huh. Sick of work. Judy, when are you going to stop playing mother hen to that parasite? Somebody has to. She's my stepmother. Yeah, and she plays you for Cinderella. Tommy. Come on, Judy, live it up. Put on your glass slippers for tonight, will you? Yeah, come on. Give me a rain check, please. <sighs> hey, where are you going? To the jukebox to drown myself in music. What would you like to hear? It's all right, honey, tell him.
You said you were sick. Ah, oh, sick, Mick. <laughs> oh, Eddie's like medicine. Go ahead, say it. So I ate a homebody. Do that. Judy, I'm going to get married. Eddie? Yeah. I don't like him. You don't like him. What about what I like? Don't my feelings count? Listen, Judy, I ain't a kid anymore. This may be my last chance. Oh, he's no good, Francis. I love him. Just a few minutes ago, he it told... It doesn't matter to me what you say. I love him and he loves me. And for once in my life, I'm going to look after myself. I want you to treat Eddie Nolan decently. Understand? Don't forget. You owe me something. Hey, Francis. Hurry up. Judy, I want you to promise me. If it weren't for your father lying to me about his health... All right! I'm paying for it, aren't I? I'll be decent to Nolan. Now go on supporting you and Nolan and anybody else you like. Look, Judy. When Eddie and I are married, things will be different. You'll see. of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the opposite two sides. What did you say? Oh, x plus y times x plus y equals x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. <laughs> What's that for? Honey, I may as well be home studying. I'm sorry. I was somewhere else. What were you thinking about? Oh, Francis, Eddie, a girl wearing handcuffs. What were you thinking about? Geometry, trigonometry, algebra, physiology. You know, I majored in that. <laughs> I'm just wondering where I go when Eddie moves in. 
But it's your home. Couldn't you stay there? Mm-mm. Why not? Reason. Why don't you get married? Why don't you? Oh, I'd rather be in love. <laughs> oh, that is not a bad idea. What? Marriage. You have to finish night school. I, Tommy, take thee, Judy, and with all my worldly goods, I thee endow. <laughs> all your worldly goods. Three volumes on atomic power and a book on rocket building, all borrowed from the library. What worldly goods could you drum up, hmm? Well, let me see now. Uh, oh, my phonograph and my record collection. How many records? Two. Oh, you must have been collecting for years. Sure. <clears throat> what are they? Beethoven's Fifth and the Chopin Waltz in A minor. Uh -huh. Long hair. <clears throat> no taste. You know it. Yeah, that's one of my favorites, too. Well, where does an alien go to register, anyhow? I wonder how that would look in that TV special. Hmm? Blue white, baguette cut, platinum setting. Ten bucks down. Uh. <laughs> again? Uh, nothing's changed between us. You are stuck with me. You remember that. Uh, you better leave before your stepmother gets home. You know, she has an idea I'm alienating her meal ticket. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Pick you up tomorrow after work. Okay. Come in and I'll buy, buy you a, a cup, cup of coffee. coffee. Mm -hmm. Good night. Well, 
Hello, Judy. Where's Francis? In the car, asleep. <laughs> we hung one on and passed out. She never drank before. You never got engaged to me before, either. This is an occasion, baby. You can call me baby. Why not? <laughs> I was soon going to be your stepfather. Well, then keep it paternal. And don't start that again. Please, Eddie, go on home and sleep it off. He's just afraid of Francis. That's what it is. He doesn't have to know. You want to play tag, huh? Get out of here. Come on, Judy. You ain't too good for me. Treat me like I was a snake. Come on, Judy, why fight it? That just don't mean nothing to me, nothing to dead. I would just plant the old bag so I could be closer to you. Stay away from me. Come on, Judy. You're a young kid, you gotta enjoy life. Stay away from me or I'll kill you! again like this, so I want you to listen carefully, huh? Honey, you've got to listen to me. This is very important. I want to help you, you understand? Now, when the public defender questions you, I want you to tell them the same story you told me. Tell them the truth and plead self-defense. Remember that Eddie Nolan had a reputation as a minor racketeer. Now, this is going to help you with a jury. I'm very grateful to you, Tommy. Remember, whatever happens, tell the truth. And don't worry. I talked to Judy, Mrs. Wingate, and I think maybe I can help her. Did she ask about... about me? Do you have one? Well, did she? No. Ah, Judy was always a real good kid. She said that she hit Nolan to defend herself. Do you think that's true, Ms. Wingate? <laughs> I don't know what to believe. Mr. Nolan and I were engaged to be married. He never tried to get smart with me. Well, isn't it possible that Nolan was interested in you only to be near Judy? That's a lie. If it weren't a lie, would you be jealous of Judy? Get off that. Just because he's younger, he loved me. Will you testify that she acted in self-defense? How do I know it was self-defense? What do you want me to do, perjure myself? I know she always hated him. She said she wished he was dead. If I lie to shield her, why, I'd be blackening the name of the man I planned to marry. 
I couldn't do that to Eddie. Nah, I gotta tell the jury the truth. You'll have to say goodbye now, Judy. They won't keep the train waiting. It isn't ten years, honey. It's only one year and what the parole board decides. I don't believe you killed Nolan. And I'm not gonna let you stay away that long. Kid, the electric cure, you know, old Smokey. <laughs> well, honey, we got two vacancies. Which bunk do you like? <laughs> yeah, I kind of thought you'd take the lower. Ain't so far to fall when you get nightmares. This is your locker for your personal things: lingerie, French perfume, dancing shoes. <laughs> Good call, honey. My comb ain't got all its teeth. Get your hands off of that or your mouth won't either. Oh, please. Hey, these pictures don't do you justice, honey. Kid, didn't you bring no cards, games, or puzzles? It's allowed now, you know. New ruling of the nut doctor. The squirrel. She means the prison psychologist. Oh. I didn't know. <laughs> We even let you have lipstick on Sundays. <laughs> Ain't like the old days. Don't work you over with a hose no more. Now if you do something, they take away your hair curlers. <laughs> what's, what's the matter? What do you think, you big ape? You get frightened out of her wits, that's all. Well, I was just trying to tell her how ladylike everything was now. Sure, sure. Don't worry, honey. Hilda's right. It's really not as bad as you think. Except the cow. That gets worse and worse. Them croquettes last night. Hoo-wee, warmed over bird's nests without the birds. You'll see, baby, the, the days will go very quickly. What about the nights? That's when it's tough. When the lights are out and you can't sleep, you count cops jumping over a habeas corpus. Come on, Judy, why fight it? That just don't mean nothing to me, nothing to Sid. I was just playing the old back so I could be closer to you. Stay away from me. Come on, Judy. You're a young kid. You gotta enjoy life. Stay away from me, I'll kill you. You mustn't. You mustn't let me get you now. You gotta put it out of your mind. Hear me? You gotta put it out of your mind! First we showered, then we slipped into our 
our meats and our tables. And we just in our limousine drive off to the country club and rob the joint. Hey, Wingate. Yeah? You're wanted down to the visitor's room. A visitor for me? They say who was? Who else? Tommy! Oh, hey, wait a minute. Huh? Not a coming to our party, honey. You gotta go formal. Oh. You're always buttering up to Judy. What's the angle? No angle. Just think she's real pretty, and maybe I can help her when she gets out. The way you helped all the others that were real pretty? <laughs> then it done better to stay in. You got a dirty mouth. Someday, Martin, I'm gonna... You just... couldn't. They hid your ass. <laughs> Not as bad as it was at first, is it, honey? Not quite. I've got a friend now, Dot Martin. The one you wrote me about? Mm -hmm. For a first offense, you're bound to get the minimum. That means you'll soon be eligible for parole. Oh, Tommy. And with Francis' help, I think you're a cinch to get it. Francis? Do I have to have her help? I know how you feel about her. But she's your only living relative. And the very fact that it was her testimony that sent you here will help a lot now that she's ready to forget and forgive. Forget and forgive. She's changed a great deal since the trial. She's... Well, she's mellowed. I got a letter from her. It just rambled on. I couldn't make head or tail of it. She's been drinking a great deal. I didn't think she'd make a habit of it. She was always afraid for her looks. Well, something's eating at her. Honey, neither one of us has a single friend the parole board will accept as a sponsor. You know how it is. Sure. But I've been working on Frances, hounding her a little, and about being paroled to her. I don't know, Art. I have to think about it. Honey, do you want to spend six months, a year, longer than two years? No. What do I have to do? Nothing. I've got the sponsor's application. Francis said she'll sign it if you'll only let bygones be bygones. Anything, Tommy, anything. I just want to get out of here. The wheels are moving. I'll take it over first thing tomorrow morning and have her sign it. Okay. Yes, Judy. Only a couple more months, honey. That won't be too bad, will it? Not as long as I know you're waiting for me. No, I'm looking for Miss Frances Wingate. Oh, she's gone. Sold me the whole caboodle. Well, where'd she move to? Well, how did I know? Well, did she leave a uh, forwarding address? No, I'm not even with the post office. The mailman was just here asking me where she went. Say, uh, would you like to buy a nice stove or refrigerator cheap? No, no. I'd like to buy that phonograph. There were some records. Oh, yeah. Found a couple of them here. There you are. Tell you what. Whole bunch, ten bucks. What do you say? Yeah. What's the matter, kid? Is that a kiss-off letter from your boyfriend? <laughs> that money skipped, huh? Tough luck. My parole's coming up in two months. Now I'll never get out of here. No. Well... That's right. 
Without a sponsor. Without a sponsor, you'll have to wait for your next hearing. How long will that be? Six to eight months. Oh, God, I can't stand it another six months. Listen, Judy, maybe I can help you. Oh. Well, 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 now, look, you don't have any close relatives that you can turn to, do you? Well, do you have any friends that could guarantee a regular job or someplace to stay? Tommy tried everybody. Well, maybe I've got the answer, Judy. I've got a friend who runs a social club, and she'll do anything I ask her to. She doesn't know me. I know, but you're not particular about any kind of a job, are you? Oh, no, anything to keep from serving dead time. Well, this friend of mine knows tons of important people. And if you know lots of important people, well, someone's bound to come up with a job, right? Why would a stranger do that for me? Oh, look, Judy, you just let me handle it. Now, I'll write her a letter tonight, and tell her what a wonderful little person you are, and what a tough break you've had, and... Hey, what about sending her a picture with a letter? Uh, well, I don't have a picture. Sure you have. What about that cute one in the album? Maybe she has a friend who's a bathing suit manufacturer. Maybe he needs a model. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now look, Midge, I make a lot of money feeding hogs. But that doesn't mean I try and feed myself the same kind of slop. Meaning what, Ira? I don't kid myself that a girl this good looking would even spit on me. Women kind of steer away from my type. You mean the type who writes a half a dozen social clubs under assumed names, asking for photos of young girls interested in farm work with matrimony in mind? How did you find out about that? All the social clubs exchange listings, and I'm pretty good at recognizing handwriting. What do you mean when you said if I went into this, I'd practically have a ring on her finger or one on her nose? Just that, Ira. She'll have to do just what you say or go back to prison. So that's the gimmick. She's a parolee. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, they don't parole girls to men, or vice versa. All the law says is that acceptable residence and definite employment be assured a parolee before she's released. You mean have a work here? Yeah. Well, then investigate first. For months, the county parole authority is snowed under with work. And you really think that... You'll probably get a postal card to fill out. And for that, you'll need a widowed sister. Widowed sister? Mm-hmm. One who's come to live with you since her husband died in the East. How much is this going to cost me? Look, if you're going to be a pinch penny, I haven't got time to haggle. Now, wait a minute, Miss. Wait a minute. I'll go the limit. If the goods measures up to the sample. Meaning you want to look over the merchandise first, hmm? Why not? I buy my pigs that way. I think I can arrange a private showing. But just ogle, don't touch. When are you going to move in, sister? My bags are in the back of the car. I'll get them for you. Scrub your filthy paws first. Come in, Judy. This is uh, Judy Wingate, Miss Braggin. How do you do, Judy? I hope you'll like us. I'm sure we'll like you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was so afraid you wouldn't like me that... May I sit down, please? Of course, Judy. I think maybe you're better. Don't be nervous, dear. We're your friends. This is my brother, Ira Molson. His farm is where we'll both be staying. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Molson. And likewise. Well, everything you've told us about Judy and what we've seen inclines us in her favor. But while I appreciate my brother's efforts to help in your rehabilitation program, I won't have a shirker on the farm. Well, I can assure you that Judy's a willing worker. Oh, there'll only be a few light chores. <laughs> I'll expect you to dust and vacuum and launder in the house, uh, as well as help me with the cooking. She does all that very well. She also sews. I hope she's not what they call a clothes horse. Oh, no, I never could afford to be. 
Well, of course, you're under no obligation to make your final decision today, but if you could, it would be appreciated by my department and especially by Judy. I don't think we need prolong this any longer. I'm sure my sister agrees with me that Judy will fit right into the quiet life we lead on the farm. Yes, of course, I'm very sure she will. That's good. All right, Judy, you can go now. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was so sure you'd be impressed with this girl that I took the liberty of having the papers drawn up for your signature. Oh, well, isn't that rather rushing things? <laughs> Only because my department is so understaffed, Mrs. Braggett. Well, I'm sure it'll be all right. We can always send her back if she's unsatisfactory, Ira. That'll never happen with this girl, I'm sure, Mrs. Brackett. Now, if you'll just sign here, please. Oh, I, I think you'd better sign first, Ira. Oh, yeah. After all, my brother's the one who's guaranteeing employment. Mm -hmm. As you do, Judy. Get on base or strike out. from the first. They're a brother and sister. She's a widow, and they own a ranch. Oh, maybe it's a farm. See, that's swell, kid. Oh, Dot, I owe you everything. I'll never forget it as long as I live. You bread-headed snake, you sold her down the river. Let go of me, you big ape. You got on that gate. No, you go. I want to watch. Stand over there before I slug you. down the river. You'll find out. But not from me. Squealing's the surest way I know to wake up with a knife in your back. How do you say that? That's my friend. Oh. Girlie, with her for a friend, you'll never need an enemy. What's 
See what I mean? She spends more time with the pigs than with me. Oh, well, maybe things will change after I leave. How soon's that gonna be? Well, I'm only sticking around for your sake, in case the parole board investigator shows up. Well, I'll still have that postcard they sent. Why should they come around? In other words, you'd like me to push off. Well, with you gone, she might notice me more. Well, she seems charmed by your pigs, Ira. Why don't you find out what they've got that you don't have? I don't like what she wears. Boys' clothes, blue jeans, sneakers. What's wrong with dresses? When a woman's a woman, she shouldn't keep it a secret. Okay, I'll start packing. Well? I'll tune up a tale to tell Goldilocks. About time. Judy wrote me about you. Thank you for what you've done for her. Are you an uh, investigator? No, no, no. I'm Tommy Gray. Well, I guess maybe Judy didn't tell you about me, eh? What's there to tell? Well, nothing really. Except that we're old old friends. Uh, kind of special friends. Is Judy around? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's down by the nursing pens there. Down that way. Thank you, Miss Wilson. You sold me a gold brick. And you almost got away with it, but not quite. Don't call me, you big slob. What's got into you? Don't tell me that you didn't know she had a boyfriend. So? She's got a boyfriend. Kid who's stacked like she is has probably got a dozen guys crazy about her. Well, suppose she's crazy about this punk. Well, if she is, I'd say that's just too bad. I don't follow you. Look, if he's someone she went with before she was convicted, she's breaking her parole by seeing him. Yeah, it's one of the things the parole agent warned us to look out for. Former bad associations. Oh, watch me bounce this punk right back to where he belongs. Oh, that's smart thinking. Get all of us smeared. What do you just said? Hands off. There's a much better way to handle this. For reasons that I explained, Tommy, if you really love Judy, you won't try to see her again. Now, I didn't make the laws, Judy. And I'll see that Mr. Molson doesn't report your visit, even though it is an infraction of Judy's parole, and he's quite annoyed about it. I can see what a nice boy Tommy is. Well, then I'm sure you know there's no harm in our seeing each other. But that's not for me to judge, Judy. After all, it is one of the conditions of your parole. Now, Tommy's promised not to come here again. <laughs> Judy, no tears, please. You'll only make it more difficult for Tommy. Right. Did Judy and I have a few minutes alone to say goodbye? Yes, of course. Thanks a lot. You've both been swell. What if they try to run for it? How far'd they get? We'd have his car license and description on the air in two minutes. Why didn't you ball him out more? He made us look like softies. It might help after I leave if she thinks you're partly human. Well, I guess I'll check out of the motel and head back for town. I don't want to let you go. Well, honey, please. You're only going to make it tougher for both of us. Have you even the faintest idea of how lonely I get when I'm away from you? Oh, Judy, I love you so much. Darling, come back tonight and wait down the road. I'll meet you after there's sleep. Honey, no. You know if we're caught, what please. it means. See you just once more. I'll be there, darling. I'll be there. Oh, I don't know, Judy. I just don't know. Your stepmother was her only chance. But you only find her. Maybe if you hired a private detective. Honey, I found her. You... Well, why didn't you tell me? Where? Well, I spotted her at the unemployment insurance office last week, and I followed her. 
Well, if you know where she lives... Oh, they'd never accept her as a sponsor now. Judy, that's why I didn't tell you. She's a complete alcoholic now, living in a rooming house off Skid Row. Oh, no. <sighs> Poor Francis. Why do you suppose she's been drinking so hard? To escape from something, maybe? I brought you a present. It's at the motel. It's your phonograph. Oh, tell me. I got it from the man who bought Francis furniture. We'll pick it up. And then I'm gonna take you back. Calling car eight. Well, make up your mind, Mr. Molson. Is she a parole violator or isn't she? I don't know. Doesn't that depend on whether she's really run off or just sort of ducked out to meet this punk? It depends on you, what you want to make it. Calling car eight. You mean if I turn her in, she's going to have to go back to prison? Car eight acknowledging. The party with the car license 7R48-63 is registered at the Brookdale Motel. Thanks. We know where he is. Let's see if she's with him before I put out that PVAL. What's a PVAL? Parole violator at large. serious consequences for her. Now, we only came back here to pick up this phonograph. That's one I haven't heard. Well, it's true. This is her machine. I was keeping it for her. I brought it off from town to give it back to her. All right, son, I'll accept that. I uh, called the sheriff's office because I thought you'd run away, Judy. Well, you should have told me about the phonograph. It's all right, Sheriff. I guess I was just a little hasty. You weren't trying to run away, were you, Judy? Oh, no. You're very happy on the farm with me and Midge. Oh, yes. You get your phonograph, Judy. The Sheriff will drive us home. Who is this Midge? Well, she's my sister. She lives with us. Well, where was she tonight? She went into town to look after a little business. All right, Judy? Uh-huh. Goodbye, Tommy. Goodbye. You could have caused that girl a lot of trouble tonight. Yeah, well, I realize that now. If you have any regard for it all, don't try to see her again. Thanks, officer. Good night. Good night. Judy, you drink this. Make you feel better. <coughs> it's whiskey. Sure it is, Judy. It's, it's what you need. You've been through a lot tonight. No, please. You don't want to make Ira mad, do you? like it when you refuse to let him help you. There won't be any more trouble. 
Now that you understand, Ira. All he wants to do is make you happy. You know that now. Don't you?
we book him, it may smoke her out. She might surrender to get him off the hook. Tommy Gray? Yes, sir. You're under arrest for aiding the escape of the fugitives. Oh, we weren't trying to escape, sir. We've been trying to get to you since dawn. Any police car would have gladly furnished transportation. But I couldn't let Judy get picked up until I spoke to you first, sir. Why? Because she didn't kill Eddie Nolan. Who did? Her stepmother. <laughs> Likely story. I'll file it under a whole hum. Look, sir, I, I came here to demand that you pick up Francis Wingate as a key witness. Did I hear you correctly? Did you say demand? Yes. When she reads this, she's going to skip town. You don't think Judy killed Nolan? I'm sure of it, sir. Oh. Do you have evidence to support this statement? Yes, sir. Butler, I want you to pick up Mrs. Frances Wingate and bring her here. She's living at 105 Water Street. It's a rooming house on Skid Row. Now, young man, sit down. Tell us your story. And where's the girl hiding? She's not hiding, sir. Attorney would like to see you for questioning. What for? He'll tell you when you see him. May I come in? Well, I'm not dressed yet. Wait till I put something on. I'll take care of Ira and the parole racket later. My first job is to break down your stepmother's testimony. What if she's run away again? She won't get far. This time, the district attorney's on our side. <laughs> Send in Ira Moose and then the sister. I'll enjoy watching them squirm. This may be the break my office has been waiting for for a long time. <laughs> Judy, I don't want you to interrupt when I question Mr. Molson, no matter what he says. I understand, sir. Brackett, Mr. Molson, if you'll take cares. Well, you caught him, eh? No, they surrendered voluntarily. Judy, I'm terribly disappointed. How could you do what you did after my brother was so kind to you? I'll do the questioning, Mrs. Braggett. Sit down, please. Now, Mr. Molson, if you'll tell us your version of what happened last night, well, I don't know what this girl's been telling you, but uh, she attacked me. It was just luck I wasn't killed. 
Did you incite this attack in any way? No, how could I? I was upstairs in my bedroom when I heard a door open. So naturally went down to investigate. There she was trying to sneak out with a bottle of my best whiskey in her hand. And after my brother had forgiven her for going to a motel with this boy that same night. And what did you do then? Tried to reason with her. I told her it meant breaking a parole. What did she say? Well, I don't like profanity, especially from a young girl, so if you don't mind, I'd rather not repeat what she said. And then? Well, then I said, young lady, I said, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. I came at her, and she let me have it with a bottle. Caught me right here, right over the eye. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Molson. <laughs> Judy, would you repeat the charges you made against Mr. Molson to me? You mean about his buying me for $3,000? Yes, that and all the other things. Would you take this little jailbird's word against my brother's? I'm not taking anybody's word yet, Mrs. Brackett, until I've made a complete investigation. Pardon me, Mr. Nevins. Butler just phoned from the morgue. He said there was an accident. Mrs. Wingate is dead. Oh, honey, that's a low blow. I don't know what to say, Judy. That's the way the cards fall sometimes. Does this mean you're not going to reopen the case? Without your stepmother, my hands are tied. You're going to send me back? Judy, right now there's nothing else I can do. According to the law, you've broken your parole. Was there any question about that? Both the district attorney and I believe in you, Judy. <sighs> yes, I can see you do. You can still help a lot of other girls who, like yourself, are victims of circumstance. Oh? How can I do that? By repeating under oath what Ira Molson said when he tried to make advances to you last night. Maybe I don't remember. Don't you want to help me prosecute these two? No. Where I've been for this past year, that's known as squealing. You know what happens to squealers up there? They get a knife in the back. But you're not up there now, Judy. No, but I soon will be. And who put me there? The people. The same ones who are asking my help now. Well, what sort of rules am I supposed to live by? The laws of society or the, the jungle code of a prison tank? Either way, I can't win. I promise you I'll do my best to get your sentence reduced. <laughs> sure. Ten years reduced to a possible nine. Something to live for. Judy, I need a statement from you so I can go before the grand jury and demand an indictment against Ira Molson and Midge Brackett. So now you're no place without me. Oh, well, that's a good one. Let's just leave it like that. Honey, you're making yourself look bad. Bad? Isn't that the way I've been pictured? Isn't that the way everybody wants me to look? I regret this very much, but... Under the circumstances, I can only remand you to the custody of your parole agent. I'm sorry, Judy. All right. You want me to ask Dot Martin if she's got any more pin-up pictures of wayward girls? Well, I never. You've let me down, Judy, and I don't think I deserve this. I thought I meant more to you than this. Oh, forget her, Tommy. A little tramp isn't worth it. <gasps> Why, you! All right, I'm ready to talk now. Under oath. Remember what they do to squealers. Yes. But putting you two behind bars would be worth anything. Frank, hold Mrs. Brackett and Molson on an open charge. You two wait in the ante room. Oh, excuse me. Here, read this. It was in Frances Wingate's hand when she died. She clung to it like a very life depended on it. Maybe it did. Your stepmother left you a legacy. Judy, I killed Eddie Nolan. Forgive me. Does it mean... I'm sure the governor will grant you a full pardon, Judy.
that doesn't mean I try and feed myself the same kind of slop. Meaning what, Ira? I don't kid myself that a girl this good looking would even spit on me. Women kind of steer away from my type. You mean the type who writes a half a dozen social clubs under assumed names, asking for photos of young girls interested in farm work with matrimony in mind? How did you find out about that? All the social clubs exchange listings, and I'm pretty good at recognizing handwriting. What do you mean when you said if I went into this, I'd practically have a ring on her finger or one on her nose? Just that, Ira. She'll have to do just what you say or go back to prison. So that's the gimmick. She's a parolee. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, they don't parole girls to men, or vice versa. All the law says is that acceptable residence and definite employment be assured a parolee before she's released. You mean have a work here? Yeah. Well, then investigate first. Well, for months, the county parole authority is snowed under with work. And you really think that... You'll probably get a postal card to fill out. And for that, you'll need a widowed sister. Widowed sister? Mm-hmm. One who's come to live with you since her husband died in the East. How much is this gonna cost me? Look, if you're gonna be a pinch penny, I haven't got time to haggle. Now, wait a minute, Miss. Wait a minute. I'll go the limit. If the goods measures up to the sample. Meaning you want to look over the merchandise first, hmm? Why not? I buy my pigs that way. I think I can arrange a private showing. But just ogle, don't touch. When are you gonna move in, sister? My bags are in the back of the car. I'll get them for you. Scrub your filthy paws first. Come in, Judy. This is uh, Judy Wingate, Miss Bragan. How do you do, Judy? I hope you'll like us. I'm sure we'll like you. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I was so afraid you wouldn't like me that... May I sit down, please? Of course, Judy. I think maybe you're better. Don't be nervous, dear. We're your friends. This is my brother, Ira Molson. His farm is where we'll both be staying. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Molson. And likewise. Well, everything you've told us about Judy and what we've seen inclines us in her favor. But while I appreciate my brother's efforts to help in your rehabilitation program, I won't have a shirker on the farm. Well, I can assure you that Judy's a willing worker. Oh, there will only be a few light chores. I'll expect you to dust and vacuum and launder in the house, uh, as well as help me with the cooking. She does all that very well. She also sews. I hope she's not what they call a clothes horse. Oh, no, I never could afford to be. <laughs> Well, of course, you're under no obligation to make your final decision today, but if you could, it would be appreciated by my department and especially by Judy. I don't think we need prolong this any longer. I'm sure my sister agrees with me that Judy will fit right into the quiet life we lead on the farm. Yes, of course, I'm very sure she will. That's good. All right, Judy, you can go now. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was so sure you'd be impressed with this girl that I took the liberty of having the papers drawn up for your signature. Oh, well, isn't that rather rushing things? <laughs> Only because my department is so understaffed, Mr. Braggett. I see. Well, I'm sure it'll be all right. We can always send her back if she's not satisfactory, Ira. That'll never happen with this girl, I'm sure, Mrs. Brackett. Now, if you'll just sign here, please. Oh, I, I think you'd better sign first, Ira. Oh, yes. Yeah. After all, my brother's the one who's guaranteeing employment. Mm -hmm. As you do, Judy. Get on base or strike out. Let me go, Judy. They took me. Oh, I'm going to like me from the first. They're a brother and sister. She's a widow, and they own a ranch. Oh, maybe it's a farm. See, that's swell, kid. Oh, Dot, I owe you everything. I'll never forget it as long as I live. 
You bread-headed snake, you sold her down the river. Let go of me, you big ape. Keep your eye on that gate. No, you go. I want to watch. Stand over there before I slug you. down the river. You'll find out. But not from me. Squealing's the surest way I know to wake up with a knife in your back. How do you say that? That's my friend. Oh. Girlie, with her for a friend, you'll never need an enemy. time with the pigs and with me. Well, maybe things will change after I leave. How soon is that going to be? Well, I'm only sticking around for your sake, in case the parole board investigator shows up. Well, I'll out that postcard they said. Why should they come around? In other words, you'd like me to push off. Well, with you gone, she might notice me more. Well, she seems charmed by your pigs, Ira. Why don't you find out what they've got that you don't have? I don't like what she wears. Boys' clothes, blue jeans, sneakers. What's wrong with dresses? When a woman's a woman, she shouldn't keep it a secret. Okay, I'll start packing. Well? I'll tune up a tale to tell Goldilocks. About time. Hello? Oh? Now you must be Mr. Molson. Judy wrote me about you. Thank you for what you've done for her. Are you an uh, investigator? No, no, no. I'm Tommy Gray. Well, I guess maybe Judy didn't tell you about me, eh? What's there to tell? Well, nothing really. Except that we're old old friends. Uh, kind of special friends. Is Judy around? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's down by the nursing pens there. Down that way. Thank you, Miss Wilson.
like you sold me a gold brick. And you almost got away with it, but not quite. Don't paw me, you big slob. What's got into you? Don't tell me that you didn't know she had a boyfriend. So? She's got a boyfriend. Kid who's stacked like she is has probably got a dozen guys crazy about her. Well, suppose she's crazy about this punk. Well, if she is, I'd say that's just too bad. I don't follow you. Look, if he's someone she went with before she was convicted, she's breaking her parole by seeing him. Yeah, it's one of the things the parole agent warned us to look out for. Former bad associations. Oh, watch me bounce this punk right back to where he belongs. Oh, that's smart thinking. Get all of us smeared. What are you just saying? Hands off. There's a much better way to handle this. For reasons that I explained, Tommy, if you really love Judy, you won't try to see her again. No, I didn't make the laws, Judy. And I'll see that Mr. Molson doesn't report your visit, even though it is an infraction of Judy's parole, and he's quite annoyed about it. I can see what a nice boy Tommy is. Well, then I'm sure you know there's no harm in our seeing each other. But that's not for me to judge, Judy. After all, it is one of the conditions of your parole. Now, Tommy's promised not to come here again. <laughs> Judy, no tears, please. You'll only make it more difficult for Tommy. Right. Uh, Judy and I have a few minutes alone to say goodbye. Yes, of course. Thanks a lot. You've both been swell. What if they try to run for it? How far'd they get? We'd have his car license and description on the air in two minutes. Why didn't you ball him out more? He made us look like softies. It might help after I leave if she thinks you're partly human. Well, I guess I'll check out of the motel and head back for town. I don't want to let you go. Well, honey, please. You're only going to make it tougher for both of us. Have you even the faintest idea of how lonely I get when I'm away from you? Oh, Judy, I love you so much. Darling, come back tonight and wait down the road. I'll meet you after you're asleep. Honey, no. You know if we're caught, what it Please, means. Please, Tommy. I've got to see you just once more. I'll be there, darling. I'll be there. I don't know, Judy. I just don't know. Your stepmother was our only chance. But you only find her. Maybe if you hired a private detective. Honey, I found her. You... Well, why didn't you tell me? Where? Well, I spotted her at the unemployment insurance office last week, and I followed her. Well, if you know where she lives... Oh, they'd never accept her as a sponsor now. Judy, that's why I didn't tell you. She's a complete alcoholic now, living in a rooming house off Skid Row. Oh, no. <sighs> Poor Francis. Why do you suppose she's been drinking so hard? To escape from something, maybe? Hmm? <sighs> I brought you a present. It's at the motel. It's your phonograph. Oh, Tommy. I got it from the man who bought Francis furniture. We'll pick it up. And then I'm going to take you back. Calling car eight. Well, make up your mind, Mr. Molson. Is she a parole violator or isn't she? I don't know. Doesn't that depend on whether she's really run off or just sort of ducked out to meet this punk? It depends on you, what you want to make it. Calling car eight. You mean if I turn her in, she's going to have to go back to prison? Car 8 acknowledging. The party with the car license 7R48-63 is registered at the Brookdale Motel. Well, thanks. We know where he is. Let's see if she's with him before I put out that PVAL. What's a PVAL? Parole violator at large. That's the car. There must be 
must be in there. Well, smash it in and see what we find. Man? There's a what? Get your mind out of the gutter. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, you... Uh, uh, I was just playing this record for Judy. Isn't it a little late for music? Yes, sir. This girl is a parolee. Now, bringing her to a motel can have serious consequences for her. Now, we only came back here to pick up this phonograph. That's one I haven't heard. Well, it's true. This is her machine. I was keeping it for her. I brought it out from town to give it back to her. All right, son, I'll accept that. I uh, called the sheriff's office because I thought you'd run away, Judy. Well, you should have told me about the phonograph. It's all right, Sheriff. I guess I was just a little hasty. You weren't trying to run away, were you, Judy? Oh, no. You're very happy on the farm with me and Midge. Oh, yes. You get your phonograph, Judy. The sheriff will drive us home. Who is this Midge? Well, she's my sister. She lives with us. Well, where was she tonight? She went into town to look after a little business. Mm -hmm. All right, Judy? Uh-huh. Goodbye, Tommy. Goodbye. You could have caused that girl a lot of trouble tonight. Yeah, well, I realize that now. If you have any regard for it all, don't try to see her again. Thanks, officer. Good night. Good night. Judy, you drink this. Make you feel better. <laughs> it's whiskey. Sure it is, Judy. It's, it's what you need. You've been through a lot tonight. No, please. You don't want to make Ira mad, do you? like it when you refuse to let him help you. Now, there won't be any more trouble. Now that you understand, Dyra. All he wants to do is make you happy. You know that now, don't you? from the moment he first saw your picture. That's why...
We weren't trying to escape, sir. We've been trying to get to you since dawn. Any police car would have gladly furnished transportation. But I couldn't let Judy get picked up until I spoke to you first, sir. Why? Because she didn't kill Eddie Nolan. Who did? Her stepmother. <laughs> Likely story. I'll file it under a whole hum. Look, sir, I, I came here to demand that you pick up Francis Wingate as a key witness. Did I hear you correctly? Did you say demand? Yes. When she reads this, she's going to skip town. You don't think Judy killed Nolan? I'm sure of it, sir. Oh. Do you have evidence to support this statement? Yes, sir. Butler, I want you to pick up Mrs. Frances Wingate and bring her here. She's living at 105 Water Street. It's a rooming house on Skid Row. Now, young man, sit down. Tell us your story. And where's the girl hiding? She's not hiding, sir. attorney would like to see you for questioning. What for? He'll tell you when you see him. May I come in? Well, I'm not dressed yet. Wait till I put something on. I'll take care of Ira and the parole racket later. My first job is to break down your stepmother's testimony. What if she's run away again? She won't get far. This time the district attorney's on our side. <laughs> Send in Ira Moat and then the sister. I'll enjoy watching them squirm. This may be the break my office has been waiting for for a long time. <laughs> Judy, I don't want you to interrupt when I question Mr. Molson, no matter what he says. I understand, sir. Sprague, Mr. Molson, if you'll take chairs. Well, you caught him, eh? No, they surrendered voluntarily. Judy, I'm terribly disappointed. How could you do what you did after my brother was so kind to you? I'll do the questioning, Mrs. Braggett. Sit down, please. Now, Mr. Molson. If you'll tell us your version of what happened last night. Oh, I don't know what this girl's been telling you, but uh, she attacked me. It was just luck I wasn't killed. Did you incite this attack in any way? No, how could I? I was upstairs in my bedroom when I heard a door open. So naturally, I went down to investigate. There she was trying to sneak out with a bottle of my best whiskey in her hand. 
And after my brother had forgiven her for going to a motel with this boy that same night. And what did you do then? Tried to reason with her. I told her it meant breaking a parole. What did she say? Well, I don't like profanity, especially from a young girl, so if you don't mind, I'd rather not repeat what she said. And then? Well, then I said, young lady, I said, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. I came at her, and she let me have it with a bottle. Caught me right here, right over the eye. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Molson. <laughs> Judy, would you repeat the charges you made against Mr. Molson to me? You mean about his buying me for $3,000? Yes, that and all the other things. Would you take this little jailbird's word against my brother's? I'm not taking anybody's word yet, Mrs. Brackett, until I've made a complete investigation. Pardon me, Mr. Nevins. Butler just phoned from the morgue. He said there was an accident. Mrs. Wingate is dead. Oh, honey, that's a low blow. I don't know what to say, Judy. That's the way the cards fall sometimes. Does this mean you're not going to reopen the case? Without your stepmother, my hands are tied. You're going to send me back? Judy, right now there's nothing else I can do. According to the law, you've broken your parole. Was there any question about that? Both the district attorney and I believe in you, Judy. Yes, I can see you do. You can still help a lot of other girls who, like yourself, are victims of circumstance. Oh? How can I do that? By repeating under oath what Ira Molson said when he tried to make advances to you last night. Maybe I don't remember. Don't you want to help me prosecute these two? No. Where I've been for this past year, that's known as squealing. You know what happens to squealers up there? They get a knife in the back. But you're not up there now, Judy. No, but I soon will be. And who put me there? The people. The same ones who are asking my help now. Well, what sort of rules am I supposed to live by? The laws of society or the, the jungle code of a prison tank? Either way, I can't win. I promise you I'll do my best to get your sentence reduced. <laughs> sure. Ten years reduced to a possible nine. Something to live for. Judy, I need a statement from you so I can go before the grand jury and demand an indictment against Ira Molson and Midge Brackett. So now you're no place without me. Oh, well, that's a good one. Let's just leave it like that. Honey, you're making yourself look bad. Bad? Isn't that the way I've been pictured? Isn't that the way everybody wants me to look? I regret this very much, but... Under the circumstances, I can only remand you to the custody of your parole agent. I'm sorry, Judy. All right. You want me to ask Dot Martin if she's got any more pin-up pictures of wayward girls? Well, I never. You've let me down, Judy, and I don't think I deserve this. I thought I meant more to you than this. Oh, forget her, Tommy. A little tramp isn't worth it. Oh! <gasps> Why, you! All right, I'm ready to talk now. Under oath. Remember what they do to squealers. Yes. But putting you two behind bars would be worth anything. Frank, hold Mrs. Brackett and Molson on an open charge. You two wait in the ante room. Oh, excuse me. Here, read this. It was in Frances Wingate's hand when she died. She clung to it like a very life depended on it. Maybe it did. Your stepmother left you a legacy. Judy, I killed Eddie Nolan. Forgive me. Does it mean... I'm sure the governor will grant you a full pardon, Julia. 